Hey guys, and welcome to Provax. Don't forget to subscribe for more weekly videos and check out the Facebook page. So as we talk more and more about vaccines, I figured it would be a good idea to talk about what exactly is in vaccines and also get into a bit of detail into what is not in vaccines. I figured this video would be a good chance to talk about some of the controversy and misunderstandings surrounding the ingredients in vaccines. Vaccines are not easy to make, and a lot of people think that vaccine manufacturers and the government are putting all kinds of harmful things into our vaccines. I mean, if you look at some of the stuff that people post online and on Facebook, it really becomes concerning that people actually think that these things are put into our vaccines, or maybe they are put into our vaccines, but maybe, just maybe, scientists might know what they're doing. This week, I'll be focusing on two of the most controversial ingredients in vaccines. The first ingredient I would like to discuss, commonly accused of being in vaccines, is mercury. Mercury is a main component of the preservative thimerosal. As of 2001, the US FDA, due to parental outcry and not because of any scientific findings, have removed thimerosal from all childhood vaccines. Also, thimerosal was never used in the MMR vaccine, inactivated polio, varicella, otherwise known as chickenpox vaccine, or pneumococcal vaccines. It was used in some multi-dose vials of the flu and other vaccines, but there is no link between thimerosal and any type of neurodegenerative diseases. So you might be wondering, what exactly is thimerosal? As previously mentioned, it is a preservative used in multi-dose vials of vaccines to prevent bacterial growth due to repeated punctures of the vial. Any single-dose vaccine does not contain thimerosal. So why do people think thimerosal is so bad? Well, this is because thimerosal contains ethyl mercury. But wait, I thought mercury was bad for you and your public water companies constantly test for mercury in the public water supply. Yes, that is true. Water companies do test for mercury in the water, but the type of mercury that they test for is not ethyl mercury. But isn't ethyl mercury still mercury? Yes and no. The mercury that you are thinking of is known as methyl mercury, and when compared to ethyl mercury, the two seem similar but are very different. Any chemist or undergraduate student who has taken orgo can explain to you the difference between an ethyl and a methyl group. See, an ethyl group has two carbons in it, and a methyl group has one carbon in it. This makes the ethyl group effectively double in size to that of a methyl group. So while methylmercury can cross the blood-brain barrier and enter the brain causing damage, ethylmercury is much too large to cross the blood-brain barrier. This means that ethylmercury is harmlessly excreted from the body in the patient's urine. To put this into perspective, think of the difference between ethanol and methanol. Ethanol is the alcohol that is commonly found in beer, wine, and liquors. Methanol is a toxic alcohol used to clean and sanitize medical equipment. It is also a byproduct of moonshine, and this is why you can go blind from drinking moonshine if it is not properly distilled. So to summarize thimerosal, one, there is no mercury in childhood vaccines, and two, thimerosal cannot cross the blood-brain barrier to cause any harm. So the next ingredient I want to talk to you about is formaldehyde. This is present in our vaccines, including the ones we give to babies. But hold on, I thought formaldehyde was the stuff used to embalm bodies and is a carcinogen that is commonly found in cigarettes, and it's toxic to cells and therefore babies. Yeah, that's true. But did you also know that formaldehyde is produced and necessary during DNA synthesis? You know, the stuff that happens inside of every one of our cells all the time, nonstop, our bodies can also naturally break down formaldehyde and excrete it safely from the body. Formaldehyde is typically used to inactivate or kill pathogens. It is also commonly used to create toxoids, the inactivated form of a toxin, to create toxoid vaccines. Formaldehyde is not directly put into vaccines. After the inactivation of the pathogen, the formaldehyde is typically washed away but trace amounts of formaldehyde can still technically remain. Think of it like if you use a strainer to wash some chicken. 
So you bleach the strainer and wash it before you wash your vegetables. Technically, there may be some bleach left on the vegetables, but it's not really a harmful amount. It's a trace amount. It's the same thing with the formaldehyde during vaccine production. Okay, but I still don't like the idea of giving my child a vaccine that might contain trace amounts of formaldehyde. It doesn't seem natural. Very well then. So I guess you don't ever want to give your child a piece of fruit. Did you know a typical vaccine might contain up to 100 micrograms of formaldehyde? While an average pear contains around 60,000 micrograms of formaldehyde, that's the key difference. That means a single piece of all natural fruit has around 600 times the amount of formaldehyde in it as a single shot. Now I'm not saying don't give your child a pear because of the formaldehyde in it, but rather consider the fact that formaldehyde is natural and when taken into the nanoscale quantities, it will have virtually no effect on the body, even in babies. Just because something is natural or unnatural does not mean that it is good or bad for you. In fact, take a look at these two lists of ingredients and decide for yourself if you would put either of them into your body. I'll reveal what these lists are in the next video. With that, we'll conclude this video. And please join us next time as we'll be going over other ingredients in vaccines and other common misconceptions surrounding them. I hope this video was informative and that you guys liked it. Please like this video if you liked it. Leave a comment down below with questions, comments, or ideas for future videos. Don't forget to subscribe and join the notification squad so you'll know when I upload more videos. Thank you.